Hi, and welcome to another episode of Delaware County Political News. I am your host, Larry DiMarco, and today we'll be in Yaden for its borough council election. Actually, a primary election. The room was packed, and the audience was interested, spirited, and involved. Every seat was contested, and all the candidates were passionate, motivated, and focused. Questions were fielded from the audience, and it was clear that there was history behind the debate as the candidates had some bad blood between them. There were past events, unresolved issues, and it led to questions and some good debate topics. Uh, On the negative side, Uh, There was an air of distrust, uh, high scrutiny, and accusations which borderlined on personal insults. On the positive side, the community closely interacted with the elected officials, were informed, and demanded accountability. As I watched, I wondered how many boroughs and townships across the county were as involved as the Aiden. And so, I ask you, my listeners, are you as involved and as informed as the Yaden community? Will your local government hold debates uh, like the Yaden NAACP, and will you get involved in your community like the Yaden citizens? Now let's watch the Yaden debates. Ron Francis. And I felt as though the taxes that we're paying, 
We're not getting the services that we deserve. And we're working hard every day just to come back to something that we're not happy with. And that's the poor conditions of this borough. So by helping the borough to improve the conditions, I'm helping myself, I'm helping my neighbors, I'm helping everyone who lives in the area. Good evening to everyone. What inspired me to rerun, because I'm a counselor in the government, is uh, the community. I have passion in this community. I've lived here for over 30 years. Uh, my children went to the William Penn School District. I now work with the Public Works um, Committee here, which is a municipality. Um, there's great, great things that's going on, and I want to continue in that path to bring Yaden back. I'm ready to see Yaden move forward. Transparency, um, checks and balances is what I'm looking forward to, and I know that I can bring that to this council. All right, thank you. Hello, my name is Councilwoman Lorraine Johnson. I was inspired by my mother. She will be 94 years old come August. She brought me into the community and she taught us how to scrub the steps and how you swept your neighbor's side on either side when you swept. At the age of 19, I found out that I was very interested in real estate and I went on to purchase my first house at 19 and a half years old. From that point on, I went on to become a clerk with the School District of Philadelphia, a secretary, a secretary of three, and went on to get into management. And I retired from the school system as a manager. I also had worked for the post office, did not like it, <laughs> so I went back to the school system. Um, I had an awful lot of vision. I truly dream in color. Your time Things can just start. come to me and I can do it. Thank you. Mr. Frank. Good evening to everyone. My name is Ronald Francis. I've worked for the government for 40 years. Uh, I've been a resident out here for 31 years. My wife and I moved out here. As the mayor said, it was nice and clean. Everything was great. Both my sons went to William Penn High School. They both went to college. I volunteered for the recreation department for 13 years. Once I retired, I sat back here. I wrote a couple things for the newspapers. Uh, also, took my wife on a cruise, so we enjoyed it. But when we got back, it's like, what do you do now? And along with telling young people you can be leaders, why, why don't I step up and be a leader? Okay? There's a lot to be done out here in Yale, and there's a lot of things I want to get done. One was the recreation center we've been trying to get for years. We hear we hear children out on the streets. They should not be out on the streets. They should have somewhere to play, somewhere to use that energy. So I want to come and make a difference in Yale. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. I want to first thank Dr. Ford and the NAACP for hosting this forum tonight. I am very, very excited to be a part of this group to talk a little bit about why we're motivated to do the things that we do. Uh, with regards to the borough of Yale, I moved here approximately 31 years ago with uh, my nine children. I was had gone through a divorce, had remarried, had three more kids, and all of them have been raised here in the borough of Yale. Uh, I'm proud. I'm a proud parent of nine of those children with college degrees. Five grandchildren with college degrees. Uh, but if you have complaints about the community that you live in, uh, I have a, a philosophical approach to that. That rather than complaining uh, about the darkness, you simply light a candle. And so that's what I've attempted to do in the three and a half years, recent years of serving on this council. Uh, there were a lot of challenges because leadership is not uh, for the faint of heart. It, it, it takes courage, it takes determination, it takes faith to, to, to serve in a capacity uh, on, on a, a, a borough council. So I'm very, very excited about the continued um, incumbency here and continuing to serve here. 
So, but I, I would ask you to, I'm sorry that your time is up. Thank you everybody for uh, coming out tonight. Thank you, Dr. Ford, uh, Madam Jordan, and the NAACP. Um, and thank you, neighbors, uh, young and old. You know, I got to a point at serving at, on the William Penn School Board where I noticed that there were two types of elected officials. They're the ones who talk about doing it, and then they're the ones who do it. Um, and I realized that our borough, we're short on those who are actually doing it who are actually out there serving in the proper capacity, um, working to reduce taxes, working on the real issues that impact a lot of the things that in all panels that we're going to talk about tonight. Um, so you'll hear throughout tonight uh, what our plans are. We have a supreme team that is poised and ready, action-oriented on day one, um, fixing our infrastructure, cleaning our streets, uh, reducing crime. Uh, we're going to lay out all of these issues tonight. Uh, I'm looking. I'm very looking forward to serving with Talia Jones Waters, uh, serving with uh, Latoya Monroe. Uh, we have a, a supreme team with Leanna Rocklaw, Clara Johnson, uh, Rob Francis, and myself. Uh, so we've been working very, very diligently, very, very hard over the past couple months to build these issues. We're going to hear them all tonight. Thank you. I would like to be mindful of the fact that. For you, and you have one minute. One minute. Are there any income variations that would cause our town to be uh, to be described as a distressed community? What we did when we came on board was to stabilize the financial fiscal management of this town and to put in place uh, the types of policies and procedures and financial accountability that this town lacked. We also had to make sure that the principles, not just the borough code, but the implementation. So we had three criteria. We said that the finances of this town had to be done by competent individuals. We had the second principle was that people had to have integrity that served here, whether they were contractors or employees. We also said that public safety had to be a job one priority for this community because most people that that moved to Yadon, 
moved to Yale not only for the street, the tree-lined streets, but they also, but they also moved to Yale because it was a suburban community close to the airport, close to downtown, that you could have the quality of life that you wanted for your family. So we made sure that we put those particular principles in place and we build on it from there. Just like Mr. Wilkins did, uh, I looked up uh, for the ordinance and codes and some of them are out of date, but we know basically they got their guidelines for the borough. They also, the councils also watch over the budget. They work oversee different committees, but they are so fairly out of date, we need to update those uh, codes. Uh, another thing, we work with a lot of uh, committees. They oversaw those committees. We need to bring some of these committees back so we can get some movement in the That's right. I don't want to be too redundant. I think they covered uh, pretty much most of the items. But I think uh, one thing that that uh, our borough council seats need to really be able to do is attract the right businesses in Maine as well. Um, currently, currently um, serving as budget and finance uh, uh, chair of the William Penn School Board. Currently, the William Penn currently Gaten um, is not collecting 1.1 million dollars a year in taxes. A lot of that is from businesses and investors who are pillaging our, our communities and not paying their fair share of taxes. That is the primary reason your taxes are very high. That is the primary reason. Um, Gaten Borough and, and the six boroughs in, in this, in this uh, William Penn community uh, simply do not have the business growth uh, the, the commercial footprint that's needed to offset the taxes for the home. And a lot of the businesses that are here simply are not paying their fair share. One role of, of our council that we will foresee is, is enforcement of that collection. I see that uh, 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 I would, uh, Ms. Harris wants to have a rebuttal. Yes, there's a rebuttal because uh, what Mr. Uh, Cave is not familiar with is the fact that about 42 years ago, the borough of Yadon had an opportunity to opt into a business privilege tax for the entire borough of Yadon. Out of all of the municipalities in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, our then Mayor Mullen uh, allowed that door to close. So the borough of Yadon does not have a business privilege tax. So, so if you're talking about, if, so if you, but your collection with regards to property taxes, you have to make that distinction. If, 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 if in fact those businesses are not paying taxes, that is the responsibility of the school board to do that. But be clear, there is not a business privilege tax. Attracting more development is good for our borough because you have a presence of different services that can be offered and you can incentivize that attraction to our town because we don't have a business privilege tax. But let me mention this. Unstable government and changing your government every two years just, just uh, totally causes other businesses not to want to come here. So it's important to have continuity of leadership and continuity of, of councilmatic uh, persons. Sorry, so the time is up. I'm sorry. Uh, we have a rebuttal over here. As I previously stated, as I previously stated, you need to go to the code. The job of the council, again, is to write ordinances. Yes, there is no business privilege tax, but if the councilors come together and write an ordinance that any new business is coming into Dayton, we can collect taxes from it. As far as businesses coming into Dayton, everybody knows in the back of Billy Road and industrial side, that's cut off for Upper Darby. If, yeah. you get, if you get with your state representative, Margot Davidson and Joanne McClinton, and get the ball rolling, and we get those businesses back into Dayton after the count, after the council write an ordinance saying new businesses have to pay taxes, that's additional money that we can have in Dayton to help with the school board. Again, don't get jobs, do get jobs. Yeah.
I can say this, and I can say this. Mr. Wilkins, do you have facts yes. to back that up? Yes. All right, thank you. Excuse Council Johnson. Um, council, the role of council is primarily that of legislators, and that is true. As far as the business privilege tax is concerned, that people slept on decades ago, it is not so simple just to say you're gonna rewrite an ordinance to bring it back in. That's, that's not true. We have already talked with senators and representatives. Don't you think we have already done that? If it were that easy, it would have already been done. Trust me. This is an issue that may even have to go to the Supreme Court to get it done. It's not that easy. Trust me. Thank you. Maybe not the right thing. <laughs> because they brought the competent financial management skills to this town that we have not had in many years. Sorry, your time is up. Uh, and we don't know where the money is. Yes. We work good on council together. Sometimes I might get a little bit of passion, which is known as, she's angry, but it's compassion for my community here. When we talk about the percentage firm, there's no checks and balances there. There has not been not one financial meeting with any or all of the committee with some, but not with all of the council. Com uh, finance committee meetings have been dropped, have been dropped. As a, a counselor myself, I don't even know what the budget is. If I ask a question on the floor, seconds. if I ask a question on the floor, I am told. Don't have to answer that, and I can't get the answer. Simple. As I'm Thank sorry. You, Thank you, Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Clara Johnson. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. Okay. The role of a council member is simple: is to manage the the municipality, to establish policies and procedures, to pass ordinances. With that being said, if you're going to run a borough, you have to make sure you're keeping up to date with ordinances. We all know that there's no business privilege tax. Yes, we know that. Council 
Joshua Johnson, Lorraine Johnson, just mentioned that it's not that simple. We may have to go to Supreme Court to fight it and get it done. Well, why not do it? Because I've been taken to court by some council members for nine cents. This is for the community that will help. So that will be done. The business privilege tax that Yankee Borough no longer has is a state statute, and there is nothing we can do about it. That's right. That's right. 
and give an example. I will characterize my problem solving style by simply identifying the problem and coming up with a solution. Hopefully I will have people surrounding me that will be able to help me to come up with a feasible solution because I can't do it by myself. That's how I would solve a problem. I think you've, you've covered the skills and experiences you bring to the table, so I'm not going to ask you about that, uh, but specifically, but I, those skills that you have, how would they benefit the Yaden uh, development? As a first class borough. Uh, I believe my skills working for the U.S. government it will be greatly used here. I uh, started out as a pharmacy tech, went to warehouse, became a warehouse leader, then I was a project coordinator. I was a union rep, executive board of the union, and a union treasurer. So I know how to work with people, I know how compassionate they are, I know how to negotiate, I even work with the purchasing department. Uh, as a treasurer, I kept the books, I maintained books for four years. Anybody can come in there, transparency and accountability. This is what we need in our county. We need more people who can communicate and be able to be team leaders. Uh, I took uh, leadership classes while I was working for the government, so I believe I can bring all those qualities in there. And also the neg negotiation part. And dealing with people who don't want to deal with you, you learn to sit down and compromise. This is the main word, is compromise, to get your goal. Introduction, I failed to mention that, uh, that I attended the Warden School of Business, uh, spent four and a half years there, I came back uh, 25 years later after raising 12 kids, which requires lots of management. Uh, I uh, just went back to school and finished a four-year degree at the Karen University, uh, a, degree, a bachelor's degree in Bible because I am an ordained minister as well, an associate minister at my church. Um, I think that one of the most important things in leadership is that you have to be able to build um, uh, unity and build cooperation. In order to do that, you have to be very, very familiar with what the problems are and what the solutions, possible solutions can be worked out. We've done that the past three years in three months on this on this council without the support of the entire council. I'm sorry, we're kind of uh, Is there anybody else who wants to address this? Uh, just real quick, I, mean, I think accountability and vision, right? So, um, as servant on the William Penn School Board, I've never missed a meeting. I've never missed a vote. I'm there for our students. I'm in, I'm, I'm in Evans all the time. Uh, I'm in Bell Avenue actually working on solutions. Uh, and let's talk about vision as well. Uh, we have, an, we have a, an, an opinion here, we have an option here to either look at what the current council has done over the past four years, or move forward, or start to grow, st start gaining growth again. This is the decision that you'll have on May 16th. 30 seconds. Thank you. Please don't make a mistake. We are moving forward. In 2012, this borough had no money. And in 2017, the question we are is, I just interrupt. The question is, what skills and experiences do you bring to the table which would benefit Yankees development? Okay. First class, I bring vision. I bring empathy. I bring compassion. I bring strength. I know all about accountability. I know all about communication. I know all about integrity. Because I was in the military for 17 years and you're taught it thoroughly. So I know all those words. I know all about that and all about what you need to do. Trust me, I do. And I bring a lot of vision to this borough. In fact, I'm a, I'm a, I was a real estate agent 
getting ready to go back into real estate and my expertise in staging and design helped me to create this. Thank you. Are my research skills. Any information that I put into the community has been researched and has been proven. I do not put anything out unless it is the truth and nothing but the truth. <laughs> Therefore, if I am elected, and I am pretty confident that I will be elected, right. I will make sure that any information that is brought before the council is true and has been thoroughly researched and a proper verifications have been made. I also bring accountability, transparency, and integrity because I don't do anything that's not proper. All I have is my name sentence and without that name, you're nothing. What I bring to the table is leadership, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. I'm a staff sergeant in the United States Army. I've been into basic leadership course, advanced leadership course. Working with people is what I do. I'm an HIV instructor and counselor here in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. I work with people. My previous job here in Delaware County, I'm a drug and alcohol case manager. Drug and alcohol case manager and a certified allied addiction practitioner for Gayton, I mean, I'm sorry, for Delaware County in Pennsylvania. So what I bring to Gayton is working with the community, dealing with people, that's what I do. That's what I'm about. That's what I bring to Gayton, working together, reaching across, shaking hands, not holding rights, but moving things forward and getting things done. That's what I bring. Thank you, Mark. All right, uh, can we move forward or do you want to uh, say something? I'd like to move forward if okay. we can. Thanks for watching part one. Now please go to part two of the Yaden Borough Council debates.